Good morning. My name is Mark DePue. I'm the Director of Oral History at the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library. And today I'm in, in Rockford, Illinois at the Midway Village Museum. And it's August 1st, 2017. It's a Tuesday. And boy, I've been looking forward to this one for a long time. I've got Shirley Berkovich. Good morning, Shirley. Good morning, Mark. Understand that you're an early riser. I am. I am. Is that uh, going back to your baseball days as well? Uh, I don't know. It's, uh, I've always been that way. I, even when I was a kid, I remember my mom used to always say, don't get up so early. So. <laughs> well, we're here to talk about your experiences when you were playing with the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. And we've got some cues behind you here. Uh, I, don't, I think you had a, a cameo shot in a league of their own. We'll get to that much later in the interview, but uh, it's, it's got to be kind of exciting to be a piece of American history like that. Is, is, uh -huh. And do you enjoy going around the country and, and telling folks about your experiences? We certainly do. It's, it's so much fun to share our experiences with people because they are so interested. Uh, you know, with the movie and everything, it just brought us out into the uh, public eye, I guess you'd say. We were kind of obscure there for, for so many years, and then all of a sudden, boom. <laughs> well, you and the World War II generation, and suddenly you got to the early 90s, and everybody got interested in the yeah, stories, yeah. And, and rightfully so. Let's start off your story where it began. Tell me when and where you were born. I was born in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and uh, lived in a small town just eight miles east of Pittsburgh, uh, Swissvale. And, uh, Are you avoiding telling me your birthday on purpose here, Shirley? Or? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I was born February 4th, 1933, at McGee Hospital, if you, if you want to know what hospital. <laughs> right in the midst of the Depression. <laughs> yes. Tell me about your dad. Where did he work? My dad was a steel mill worker, of course, in Pittsburgh. Everybody was a steel mill worker. And uh, my mom was a homemaker. What was your dad's name? Michael. Michael Berkovich. Michael. How long had the family been in the United States? Oh, uh, I, uh, forever. I think my grand, even my grandparents, they had been here uh, a while. <laughs> what was your mom's maiden name? Simbala. 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 They came from uh, uh, Russia, well, Russia, Poland, Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia, the Slavic uh, nations. Uh, and my mom used to say we were, whoever was in rule, that's, that's what we were. If the Russians were in rule, we were Russian. The Polish were in rule, we were Polish. Okay, so th there was no Poland at that time when no. they left the country. And Good reason to be leaving, probably. Yeah. Especially, did they come before World War One? Do you know? No, my uh, actually, my uh, parents were born. Well, my mom was born over there, and only because uh, her parents went back for a short time and and decided that America was where they wanted to be. So, uh, my grandmother was pregnant with my mom, so she was born over there. But then, just she was just weeks old when she came here. So she had no accent when you were growing up? No, no. Did they settle in the Pennsylvania area? They did. We had, uh, uh, they had family there in, in that area, and so that, that, that's where they settled. Did your dad, was he able to work all through the Depression? Uh, as far as I know, uh, the steel mills were in operation, so yes, uh, Okay, now, we need to start weaving in athletics into this. Were either of your parents athletic? My dad. My dad was a, a good, good ball player. He, he played for St. Francis Co College in, uh, oh, I forget the name of this. Saint, oh, I'm going to say, um, oh. Surely I can't when think we of get it. to do the transcript, we can make sure we got that in there. We okay, can find that I, uh, part out. Loretta, PA. Okay. Loretta, PA. He played baseball? He played baseball, yes. He was a baseball player and basketball. And uh, I don't think he played football, but basketball and baseball. What position did he play in baseball? He was a shortstop. 
Ooh. Yes. Okay. So a decent hit, hitter and a good fielder, huh? Yes, he was. I remember going to see him play. Uh, uh, we uh, used to pack up the car and because he was just played uh, after uh, playing for for St. Francis. He actually the reason he played for St. Francis was he was in the seminary. He started out in the seminary, and then and then he met my mom, and then that went down the drain. So, so anyway, that's how he where he started playing, and then after that, it was just with local teams, and that's where we used to travel around and, and with him, and uh, he'd play a game, and then would come home, and just like a weekend thing. Did you talk over the game with him after the games? We did, and not only that, uh, Mark, you know, he used to take, take me to the ball game. The Pirates, of course, in Pittsburgh, Force Field, we were, uh, uh, you know, very cl close to the, to the stadium, so we were able to go quite often. And on the weekends, my dad used to take me to the ball game. And uh, we used to sit in the stands, and, and I'll, I'll never forget this. He'd say to me, okay, now, we're going to take a, one player for each inning. Like we're going to take the first base for the first inning. We'll take the first baseman. And then he'll say, "We'll concentrate on him." Now watch where he goes when the ball's hit here. Watch the position he plays here. Watch his footwork when he does when he makes a, you know a stretch. And so the whole inning that was my job to watch these, these uh, major leaguers play. And then we'd go to second base. And, and through, so through the whole game, we went position by position. And he'd say, you know, tell me, now, now look at the shortstop. Look how he makes that uh, throw to, to, uh, to the second baseman on the double play, whether it be the underhand throw or, or from what position does he throw the underhand throw and how far back before he throws it overhand. And that, and for the whole game, we used to do that. And you know, I, I can remember being so interested. I mean, I just kind of focus on those, those uh, players we were looking at at the time. That's an amazing experience. Did he it, have any idea at the time that, that you might be actually playing, uh, yeah. semi-pro or pro ball someday? No. No, he just was. He just wanted me to understand the game. He wanted me to to know all about baseball. He had the heart of a teacher then. Yes, and he knew all I was going to ever be playing was with the boys in the vacant lots and on the street. Did right you there. have some brothers? I was. I had a brother uh, that played ball, and I did tag along with him. And only because they put me in the outfield to shag the ball. See, then they didn't have to. Go, they didn't have to, they could just hit all day and then I'd pick up all the balls. <laughs> well, you were running them down, I guess, and trying to catch them <laughs> as much as you could. I certainly was. Okay, tell me about, more about your mother, her personality. My mom, she was, like I said, she was a homemaker, so she was pretty much, that, but she was a, a sports fan. She was interested, like I said, it wasn't just my, my dad and I that went to the games. Uh, Every once in a while, my mom would would come. Uh, she didn't go as often as we did. You know, she'd come sometime. But but my dad and I liked to to go because, like I said, we liked to do our little routine. <laughs> our little routine. Did you guys score the games? Keep drinking? No, no. Okay. I, I think that's where we we I got away from statistics. We never were concerned about you know batting averages and things like that. We were, we were more concerned about level of play. I mean, how, how these guys uh, played the game, fundamental baseball. That's what he wanted to teach me. Was your dad in any uh, you know, amateur leagues, anything like that? It was, a, it was a traveling league. It was a team of, of fellows that uh, traveled from uh, city to city and played lo other local teams. Was that something that the, the steel mills were putting together? I don't think it was the steel mills. I think it was just for, uh, guys that lived in the town there and picked up, got a team together and 
traveled around. Your, your dad, you mentioned, was a former seminarian. Did that mean that the, it was a good church-going family when you were uh, growing up? Uh, yes, very much so. Uh, Catholics, I would assume. Catholic, yes. Okay. Any special memories involved of that as well? Oh, uh, no, other than uh, I remember on, uh, on Saturdays we would have to go to uh, uh, class for, you know, to make your first communion and <laughs> make, make your confirmation and all that. So that was Saturday. Well, Saturdays were, you know, ball playing days. <laughs> <laughs> so, so those kind of things uh, we kind of, uh, you know, it kind of took away from a little bit. But my mom, said we had to go. Hmm. We had to go. You remember your first time you went to confession? Sometimes that's a big thing for Catholics. Yeah. Uh, no, I can't can't say that I do. Okay. Tell me a little bit more about your neighborhood you grew up in. It was a, a, a small town. I think there were 15,000 people. Um, it was uh, 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 two ends of town. There was the end of town that we lived on, and then there was a, another end of town uh, 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 across up there near the schools. Our end of town was, was a kind of away from the schools. We were more closer to the steel mills. and. Uh, Anyway, uh, we, we had a grade school, uh, one through six, uh, right close by, so I went for my first six years of school there, and then we had to go cross town to the other for junior high school, which was seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. How did you get to school? Walk. Everybody in those days walked. How far was the walk, do you remember? Oh, God, it probably a mile, maybe. Maybe less. I don't know. It must have been less because we used to come home for lunch. Oh, really? And uh, so uh, it, it, it probably was less than a mile. And it sounds like you grew up in a, a neighborhood where there was plenty of boys your brother's age, huh? Is that Lots an older of, brother? Uh, uh, yeah, he was an older brother. Uh, no, he was, he was eight years older than me. So oh. he was, uh, <clears throat> like I said, the only time I hung around with him was when you know, his team would go <laughs> go to practice and take me with them to shag balls. Was he in some kind of a formalized team? Was he playing Little League or something? No, he was playing with, uh, again, uh, they had these local teams. You know, the, the, these guys would get together and had to have a team, and then, then they'd go out and play other cities, you know, all around. And you would, would you travel with the team when they went No, there? I only got, uh, only when they had practice. Yeah. Then they take because they like to hit, you know, and then then if, if nobody was there, then they had to uh, go out and pick up all the balls. Where did you learn then to actually? I mean, you were so carefully schooled by your father about what to do when you're on uh -huh. the field. When did you have the opportunity to actually go and play in a real game, even if it's with your brother or his friends? It, no, it was just with the boys on the street. We had we had pickup games all all the time. After school, we'd come home, play under the street light. In the middle of the street. In the middle of the street. Okay, Shirley. What did you guys use for bases then? We, whatever sewer, <laughs> manhole, <laughs> whatever was around. Sometimes we'd just drop a piece of cloth or something down there. This is second bases. How many other girls were playing with you? That's it. You were it. Shirley Berkowitz, <laughs> only one. How'd you get along with the boys then? Oh, good, good. Yeah, we had, I had good relationship with the boys. We, <clears throat> we had very diversified teams. We had uh, Italians and Irish and blacks and uh, everything. It was, uh, like I said, it was a very diversified neighborhood. Well, I imagine, I'm trying to visualize this, you were kind of like the everybody's kid sister out there then. Yeah, I guess. And I, I know sometimes the, they would tell my mom, uh, you know, why do you let your daughter play with all those boys? And I know my, my mom used to say, well, is she hurting anything? You know, is she doing it? She just likes to play ball. Well, she shouldn't be playing with the boys. Well, there's no girls' teams. This is what the other mothers were saying to your yeah. mom? Yeah, uh -huh. Yeah, those are different days, aren't they? Yeah. Why do you let your daughter play with the boy? Well, 
where is she going to play? <laughs> no, and she likes baseball, and the, there's no girls baseball. So, did your dad do the same thing coaching your brother like he did with you later on? I don't know whether he did or not. I would imagine because my brother was a pretty good ball player. In fact, he uh, he we were. <laughs> My brother and I, we were kind of backward. We were kind of shy. My sister was the, <laughs> she was the one that used to go out and, you know, she was a dancer and things like that. But my brother and I were kind of backward, shy. And uh, my brother went to, uh, went into the service during the war. And when he was overseas, uh, Johnny Berardino, I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's old time base. He played for the St. Louis Browns. Anyway, he told my brother uh, when he comes back from the service, to, he gave him a card, his card, and he says, go down and to the St. Louis Browns and try out. Because he thought he was, he was good enough to. But when my brother came home, and he, uh, he said to my dad, you know, that he was going to go down, uh, that Johnny Berardino told him to go down and try out for the, for the St. Louis Browns. Uh, uh, my dad said, well, good, go ahead and go. Well, I think, and this is what my brother told me later, he got halfway down there and he got, he says, I, I was scared. And he says, I didn't know. He was only, I think, 18 years old or something, 19 years old. And he says, I didn't know whether I, I wanted. So he says, I never told, told uh, my dad or that that I didn't. But he says, I, I just turned around and came back home. Wow, interesting. So, he was, and, and I think he was always disappointed in that. And then after that, he got married. And, into that baseball yeah, career. Yeah, life moves on then, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know uh, anything about his World War II experience? He was in the South Pacific. He, he's, uh, he, when, when he was uh, at, at home here, he, he was a, uh, a, a brick mason, and he worked in the steel mills. Uh, and so when he uh, went into the service, they put him in the Seabees because they were construction. And so he worked, they worked on the airfields in the South Pacific for uh, the landing of the planes. And he, they, built the, uh, they built the runway for the Enola Gay. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I, I was going to say, I bet he had some stories to tell about that. Yeah. But you know, those guys, when they came back from war, they didn't, they didn't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. What position did your brother play? He was an infielder. Uh, he, he played short, third, second. It, it sounds like from your experiences with your dad and him whispering in your ear for the entire game as you went position, position, uh -huh. you probably had a, a better innate understanding of the game than a lot of the other kids you were playing with out there. I did, I did. I think I did. Because, uh, you know, uh, I, I learned fundamental baseball. These kids just, you know, picked up and I tried to, to do it like the major leaguers did. I like to emulate them. I, were you uh, the kind that would point out things that the other boys should be doing or no, did, no. didn't want to do that? <laughs> I don't huh? want to do that. I, I wanted to stay on the team. <laughs> <laughs> Figured they'd kick you off yeah, when you got You know more than me. You go. <laughs> How about your own style of play? How would you describe when you were growing up your style of play? I think I think I was pretty good. I, I know I, I practiced a lot. Uh, our backyard, uh, the, the house we lived in was a three-story three story house. And so uh, the, the third story, it was pretty high. So I, I'd get my ball and, uh, and th the top was, you know, of course, peaked like that. So you had space between the peak and here. So uh, I used to aim my ball for that spot there, right at that peak. And then I could, get, I could get myself a nice high fly ball. And then, of course, I, <laughs> I pretend I was some <laughs> outfielder going back for a <laughs> fly ball, catching it up again. The garage, there was a garage behind us. Pretend I was cut up against the garage. 
Up against the back fence, uh, huh? Up but against the back stopping fence. Stopping it from going out for a home run. Right. Did and you... then, uh, the, the, then we had a basement, so that was concrete. So that's where I, that's where I got my grounders. I used to bang that ball against that concrete and, you know, get those balls coming back at me pretty fast. Of course, in the backyard, there was nooks and crannies and holes. <laughs> so you got some bad hops. Well, this sounds like you just, from day one, you just loved the game. I huh? did, I did. And I, I attribute it, of course, to my dad. He, he's the one that uh, uh, did. And uh, I don't know. I guess he did. I, like I said, my brother was uh, eight years older than me, so he... I'm sure he went through the same thing <laughs> that I did with my dad. And it sounds like throwing that ball against the house, either towards the basement or up and high, you're, you're learning a little bit of control for pitching as well. Yeah, but I never, that never interests, pitching for some reason never interested me. And I think the reason was, you only got on the field every fifth day or something. <laughs> And I wanted to be more than just every fifth day. So You pitching. mentioned your sister. Was your sister older than you as well? Yes. I was the youngest. How much older was your she sister? She was four years. Okay, so every four years. There, huh? there was four years between uh, among the three of us. And you said she liked to dance, so she sounded athletic, but was she more into the more traditional feminine things, shall we say? Yes, yes, she was. She was a dance. She liked dancing and going out with the boys and, you know, that kind of thing. Did your dad try to teach her the game? No. <laughs> I think he saw right off the bat that that wasn't, <laughs> that wasn't her, her Shirley, thing. Shirley, were you daddy's little girl then? I guess, I guess you might say that. Yeah, you might say that. And were you identified as a tomboy growing up? Oh, we, any girl that played uh, something other than, you know, uh, dancing or that was a tomboy. You know, anybody that played sports, girls that played sports. Did it bother you at all? No. No, I was, my mind was set on, on baseball. Now, now you said that... Uh... Well, you, you grew up right so outside of Pittsburgh. I yep. would assume then that means that the family are Pirates fans. Absolutely. Die hard. We, never, we uh, moved to California, but I never, once you grow up with a team, Mark, they're, they're always your team. I, 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 the Pirates will always be number one, regardless the change, you know, there's a, a change in uh, players and everything, but they're still the Pirates. When did the family move to California? Uh, in 50, I, moved, I came here in 53. Uh, my mom came in 57. <clears throat> my dad passed away early. He, he was only 50 years old when he passed away. So he never did get to come to California. And uh, so anyway. What was it like losing your dad at such well, a young age? It was, it was tough. Yeah, because it sounds like you had a very close relationship with him. I did, I did. And, and it was a shock to us because he was never, my dad was never sick, never. I and mean, he never went to the doctor. He never did anything. And it was just, it was a, a massive uh, coronary. Mm. And he was here today and gone tomorrow type of thing. Well, that's too bad. Well, let's go back to talk a little bit more about the Pirates because it sounds like growing up, that was the team. That was How our often team. How did you go to the games? We sat, uh, well, my dad, you know, working, we couldn't go a lot, but my mom used to let us go, uh, a bunch of us kids from the neighborhood there. Uh, <clears throat> they would, would all get, I think it was 25 cents or something for kids to get in. And uh, so my mom, and all the kids' moms used to give us all, give us the money. And my mom used to pack me a lunch and would go down to Forbes Field, got on a streetcar, went to Forbes Field, going in. We, we used to sit in the left field bleachers because that's where Ralph Kiner played. <laughs> and we used to sit in the left field bleachers and you, you could get in early for batting practice. So we used to sit there and, and fight for for balls, 
So you and the other kids in the neighborhood would go together? Yeah, yeah. There were the, the kids I played with. So all boys? <laughs> yeah, all boys. Would you sit there and, and talk to the boys about what they should be seeing out there in the field like your dad would do? No. <laughs> I just, we, just, we just watched the game. I, I watched them, all, all the guys, but I don't know about the boys, whether they were <laughs> looking at that or not. They were just watching the game. I would imagine, though, you're watching the game with a much more critical, discerning eye than they are. That's what I mean. I think I, I watched the game differently than they did. Interesting. Well, from, from the very beginning, baseball was in your blood then, huh? it, it was. I, I don't ever remember not playing, you know. Well, you're watching the Pittsburgh team, the Pirates. Were those good years for the Pirates? Bad. They, they were not good in those years. We were always in the cellar. Of course, it was a, the National League was just, there were just eight teams then, you know, there was no division. So uh, it was the National League against the American League and, and uh, no interleague play. So you only got to see the National League teams. Watching a perpetual loser like it sounds like the Pirates were, yeah. I think you're learning some other lessons about life. Yeah, yeah you do. You, and my dad always told me that. He says, you're going to have the highs of the baseball and you're going to have the lows. He says, unfortunately, the Pirates are the lows most of the time. But he said, that's, that's the way the game is. So, When you're not going to the games, did you have a chance to listen to the games? Oh, that, the, if the Pirate game was on, it was on the radio. Katie Kaye, Rosie Rosewell. He used, to, he used to say, when the Pirates had hit her own home run, he'd say, get upstairs and open the window, Aunt Minnie, here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> and then when the, when the Pirates got the bases loaded, he'd say, there they are, FOB, full of bucks. Oh, well, yeah. what memories do you have of all of this? I do, I do. When they had the games on, were you sitting right in front of the radio? Right in front of the radio. You remember any other shows you really liked to listen to on the radio? Yeah, we liked, uh, we liked the, those uh, Lone Ranger and things like Inner Sanctum and uh, those kind of... You know, they, they say today that you know, my generation grew up with, with television, but your generation, you had a chance to exercise your imagination as you're that, painting this picture with the words. That's right. That's right. And then, like you said, with the baseball on the radio, baseball on the radio, you know, you had to be a lot more descriptive uh, because you're just, and, and like I said, when he'd say, there it goes, <laughs> get upstairs and raise the window, we knew exactly what was coming. Oh, great. Did you have any favorite players, Pittsburgh players? <laughs> you know, uh, Mark, it, it, people ask me that question all the time. Do I, did I have a favorite player? I liked the Pirates, period, the Pirates. Whoever was playing. Kiner, Kachorik, Bartiromo, Westlake, whoever. I liked everybody. I had no favorite until in 1947, Hank Greenberg from the Detroit Tigers came to Pittsburgh and he played there for one year, just that one season. And I don't know, he just impressed me so. I had never seen him play uh, because he was in the American League. So that, that was the only chance I ever got to see him play was, and it was the end of his career too, so. He probably wasn't at his best, but I just, I don't know, he just impressed me so. Did Hank Greenberg. Did you have a chance to meet any of the players? Yeah. No. Oh, no. Weren't no, you on no, there no. trying to get autographs or yeah. anything like that? Oh, I, now I take that back. Here uh, in uh, uh, California, uh, Ralph Kiner was having a book signing, and uh, I went to that book signing, and I, I got to talk to Ralph Kiner a little bit there. And I remember uh, telling him about Hank Greenberg. And he said to me, he says, you know, Hank Greenberg was the most instrumental in my hitting of any other coach. When Hank Greenberg came to Pittsburgh, he says, he, he really improved my hitting. 
so I don't know. So that's right. I did. I did meet Hank, uh, Ralph Kiner, but it was just uh, at a book signing. Those were years in baseball when oftentimes the managers were cover colorful personalities as well. Do you remember any of the managers while you were growing up? Um, <clears throat> well, uh, Leo DeRocher, of course, he was he was always a. Uh, uh, Flying around out there, and uh, but he, he's he's about the only one I remember as being. Mm, that's about all I can think of right now. Okay, wanted to ask you. You were still a very young girl when World War II started, but right. the war has everything to do with the creation of this new concept called the All-American Girls Baseball League. So what do you remember about the World War II years? Well, the thing I remember is, you know, we went to the movies, of course, and they, the news always came at the movies. You, you got the movie tone news. And uh, that was all it was, was about the war on the, on the news. Were you paying so attention we, to it pretty yes, closely? Yes, yes I was because my brother, and then I had uncles too that were all in the service. And so, yes, I, I was, I paid attention to it. And then the headlines, uh, you know, in the newspapers was always about the war. And I remember saying to my mom one time, I said, what do they put in the newspaper when there's no war? Ah. <laughs> uh. Because every newspaper I saw, it was always the war. Well, the age of innocence, you know, and yeah. the curiosity had. How would you describe the mood of America during those four years? Uh, well, I know, I know just from our family. We had uh, five uh, people in the war. I had four uncles and my brother. That were all in the service, and they were all overseas, and and uh, so it was it was a, a somber time uh, for us, especially when news came for areas that we knew they were. Uh, so. Were your grandparents, your mother's parents, still alive? Yes, yes. And so they're watching the war news, and knowing what had happened to the area of Poland or Russia that mm -hmm. they were mm -hmm. coming from. Mm -hmm. That must have really riveted their, their uh, attention. I, I would think so, although they never, uh, you know, we never talked about that, at least to us, I don't know, to my mom and dad, whether they, they talked about it to them, but, because like you say, uh, I was still young, and uh, so I don't know. Did you, look at them and did they identify them? This might be a hard question for you, but identify themselves as being Americans or being from the old country? Oh, well, I'll tell you one thing. My grandmother, uh, you know, uh, people would have grandparents that would come here and then the, the kids would have to learn the language. My grandmother told us, don't speak anything but English to me. I want to learn English. So we never spoke a foreign language while, while they, we were at home there. And my mom, the same way, she said, uh, she would talk to my grandmother, it, you know, sometime. I think, I think if they didn't want us to know what they were saying, <laughs> she'd talk to her in uh, Russian or whatever. But my grandmother always, and grandfather always said, don't talk to us in, in Russian, talk to us in English so we can learn. Sounds like your folks and the whole family were proud Americans then. Yes, they were. Okay. You mentioned that you went to a different school when you got to uh, middle school, it, junior high, is that what they called it? The yeah, they called it junior high. When you got there, uh, did you have a chance to play any sports? Were there any sports no, for the girls? Nothing. The only thing for the girls was basketball and uh, volleyball, and that was in the gym. Did yeah. you just do that for gym class, or did you uh -huh. play other No, other just schools? for gym class. No, there, there was no team uh, set up, you know, where you had a school team or anything. It was just gym class, you, uh, and that was my best subject, <laughs> <laughs> physical education. 
I got straight A's in physical education. straight A's in physical education. Excellent. How about any other courses that you really liked? Um, I was a, uh, I was an average student. I, I never intended to go to college. Uh, I, that I was never, I didn't, I, I, I like to say I, I, I wasn't college material. I, I was more, more something, yeah, you know, a, a career job that was not, uh, didn't need a college education. At that time, though, there was an awful lot of kids your age that weren't getting beyond eighth or ninth grade, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, that's right. Especially a lot of the boys, I would assume, heading to the steel mill about that time. Uh-huh, right. Yeah, no, uh, we, uh, we got our education through high school. Of course, I wasn't there for my graduation. I was in spring training. Well, we'll get to that but, here in just a little yeah. bit. Uh, but school, yeah, school, there was nothing for girls in school uh, other than the physical education class. And then we had to play that basketball, half-court basketball, where you could only do two dribbles and then you had to pass. And if you were a guard, you didn't get to shoot. You only had got the guard, and if you were a forward, you got to shoot. So, so it, I know the style that they played in Iowa when I was growing up for the girls. Uh, if you were on defense, you couldn't pass the, the center line. That's right. You played half court. You couldn't. Which side did you play? I was a forward because I could shoot. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds all like you really would have preferred to play the, the game the boys were playing. I, and I did have that opportunity. Playing with Not the in boys? school, uh, not in, in uh, junior high, but in high school. Now, this might be going back to your grade school years as well, but I wonder what you did when you had recess in school? Oh, played on the bars, you know, climbed those bars. And, you know, then, then that, uh, that playground was cement. Oh. So, you know, playing on those bars, boy, be careful you don't fall. And then, of course, we played baseball. You know, that was, that was, uh, but another the- Another pickup game? Uh, just, yeah, just the kids at school. And that, that half, half of them didn't even know how to play. You know. When you were doing that, did you have a glove and a regulation no, baseball no. and uh, what you use for a bat? Ten, tennis ball and a, a, a stick, you know, pick up a stick somewhere. Whatever worked, huh? Whatever worked, yeah. And, you know, the balls, what, you, 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 you got one ball and you used it for two years. You just kept wrapping it with that uh, black tape. Did you play any softball growing up? Never played softball. There was no softball teams around for girls, and, uh, and I, I never ever had the opportunity to. I don't know that I'd have wanted to play softball. You know, I, I've been curious about the girls who were playing a lot of softball, and then they had to make the conversion to baseball. That mm -hmm. that had to be somewhat difficult yeah. for them. And you didn't have that problem at all. I didn't have the no. I didn't have to worry about. It. I was already overhand. Back to the World War II years. It's forty-three, I think. This new concept, this girls' baseball or softball, I guess at that time league got started. Do you remember hearing about that? Never. No, no. Not in 43. Not when they started. When did you first hear about this girls <clears throat> league? 1949. In the newspaper, my brother saw an article that said that the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League was holding tryouts in Pittsburgh. He brought the article to me, and he says, why don't you go try out? Oh, gosh, I was 16 years old. <laughs> I, said, I, I'm, I was like him. I, no, no way am I going to go down there. So I think he, he knew what it was like what, when he should have gone, and he didn't want me to miss that opportunity. So he took the day off of work. And he said to me, I'll go down with you. He said, we'll just sit in the stands. He says, you don't have to go down. Just sit in the stands and watch. And Mark, you know, I knew, he knew that if I sat in the stands, there was no way I was not going to go down there. And that, that's exactly what happened. I sat in the stands for a while, and I turned to him and I says, I'm going to go try out. 
went and tried out. And uh, a couple weeks later, I got a telegram from Max Carey saying to report to West Baden Springs, Indiana for uh, uh, spring training. 16 years old, you're 16. still in high school. I'm still in high school. It was this, what time of the year was this, in the spring? This, this was, uh, yeah, spring, yeah. Yeah, but it must have been spring because. Was that the spring before your junior year in high school? Uh, it was before, it, yes, it was before my junior year in high school. And so, uh, that, yeah, that's right, I got, I got the telegram saying, now, my mom jumps in. <laughs> she says, wait a minute. She says, I never heard any, my dad and my brother were all excited, you know. My mom says, I never heard of any girls baseball league. She says, what if it's some kind of scam? What if they're getting all these girls down there? She says, no, I'm not letting her go by herself. So she bought a ticket. <laughs> she came to spring training with me. She met the chaperone and she met the uh, manager and they assured her that w it was all on the up and up <laughs> and that she could let, let me stay. And uh, Mark, about, let's see, 40, 50 years later, my mom met that chaperone again at one of our reunions. And the chaperone said to my mom, Shirley's the first girl that ever brought her mom, to, her mother, to spring training. She was there for the whole spring training, was she? No, no, she only stayed to find out if it was okay. And then she said, okay, I can stay. Well, let me backtrack real quick. <laughs> Who was the better athlete, you or your brother? Oh, my brother. Much better. You think? Oh, definitely. He was good. He's just, like I said, he, I'm sure he, he regretted that for the rest of his life, that he, he never went down there for that tryout. Sounds like you have no doubt in your mind he could have been playing pro oh, ball for a I, I, I believe he could. How tall were you at the time when you were 16 years old? I was five foot eight. I was, I was five foot eight when I was in the fifth grade. I grew, I grew all at one time, and then I never grew anymore. And if I look back on, on our, my grade school pictures, and I'm always in the back row with the boys. <laughs> well, that was at, you know, that age, there's oftentimes the girls do beat the boys in terms of the yeah, growth Yeah, I, I think so, but, uh, yeah, but I just seemed to shoot up all at one time and then stop. Well, we got you the spring training. Tell yeah. me about that experience. Well, no, let's go back. I want to hear more about okay. what you actually did at the tryouts. Oh, the tri well, the tryouts were, you know, regular tryouts. You run, hit, throw, you know, do that. Uh, they evaluate you, I guess. That's what they were doing. Because, you know, you get in a line and run down to first base and then put the stopwatch on you and it hit and, and I guess it, look at your form or what, see how far you hit. How far did you hit it? I don't know, I, I don't remember. <laughs> I'm sure I hit it though. From what everything you've told me up to this point, Shirley, this is the first time in your life you actually played with a bunch of other girls. First time, first time ever. Were you more free to give now, them pointers no. than you were with the boys? Now I was more nervous. Because now I was in my in my uh, uh, competition with girls, and uh, before I knew I could play the boys, you know. But the girls now I wasn't sure. I don't know. Maybe there are other girls out there better than than me, and I'm sure there are a lot of girls better than me. Did there was there a lot of other girls who were invited to spring training from that tryout that you yes, went to? Yes, uh huh. There were I think four four of us that came out of that tryout that went on on to play in the league. I read someplace that you were in something called the Westinghouse Girls Basketball League. Mm -hmm. What's that about? Well, that's what I was telling you about basketball. 
<clears throat> that was when the I, six on six and he couldn't cross the center line kind of thing? Yeah, that's what, uh, yeah. Then, then I got uh, a friend of my dad's worked for Westinghouse. And Westinghouse had a girls basketball team. They played boys rules and they, they played in an Ohio, Pennsylvania league. And uh, so uh, <clears throat> my dad was telling him that, you know, he says, you know, that I, I used to go down to the, we had uh, uh, in, in the next town down, there was what they called a Christian center. It was a, a, a big gymnasium where you could play basketball. So I used to go down there and play with the, again, with the boys, basketball. And uh, so when, uh, <clears throat> when my dad uh, uh, met, met he, well, he knew this guy that played. He was a, the coach of the, the basketball team. And he said, uh, he said to him, uh, my daughter, you know, she likes to play basketball. How about coming down and looking and see if you? So he came down to the center and check, you know, check you out. And so he said to me, he said, uh, "How how would you like to play basketball for us?" Well, <clears throat> you had to you had to work for Westinghouse to play on the team. So he said to me, "That's the only problem." He says that is that you have to work. And I was only well, I was 16 years old. And I said to him, I says, well, you know, I don't think I'm able to get a job at Westinghouse. And, and so he talked with my dad, and he, and I don't know, they made some kind of arrangement. I never did know what the arrangement was, but next thing I knew, I was playing on that Westinghouse team. And uh, boy, oh, what a great experience that was. We played, like I say, in a Ohio, Pennsylvania league, and we traveled around. We had uniforms. We had. Yeah, it was nice. And I, I think the reason uh, <clears throat> they liked me because I was tall. Five, you know, in those days, 5'8", you were tall for a girl. So I was a center. A center, okay. A center. Did you have good feet as well? Move around on the court well? It, yes, yeah, I was good. Well, see, my, I think my baseball helped me with that. Yeah. Well, then I also read that you played some field hockey. No, I don't know where that came from. Uh, cross that out. Okay. <laughs> Definitely. No, I never played field hockey. Okay. Well, that's what I was curious about because I didn't yeah. think there were many field hockey teams no. at the time. No, I don't. Basketball, <clears throat> baseball. Baseball. That was it. Where was your heart? Baseball. That's what I figured. Baseball. Was it, did you have any other... Uh, mentors growing up to really work with you? It sounds like your dad and your brother were the real influence. Those two. That, that, that was it. Because I, I, I never had any coaches. You know, I never played on a team that had coaches. And by the time I got to the league, I knew, you know, I was familiar. I knew fundamental baseball. I would bet by the time you got to spring training, in a lot of respects, because of what your dad had done at all these games, you knew the fundamentals much better than a lot of the girls that were out there. I think so. I think so. Unless they, unless they had a dad like mine. <laughs> I don't think there were a whole lot of dads like yours. Yeah. He must have been a special guy. Tell me about spring training then. <clears throat> Where was it again? In West Baden Springs, Indiana. West Baden Springs, Indiana. And what kind of things did you did they have you do in there? Well, it was uh, again spring training. You know, it's it's more of a, a getting ready. You know, f for uh, taking a lot of ground balls, taking a lot of uh, uh, batting practice, taking a lot of. And <clears throat> I was able to play different positions, so I I got to move around. You know, I take third base move over to first, go to the outfield. Was this spring training with players that had been in the league yeah, for a while? Yeah, or just, this was just... Muskeek and Lassies. Okay. Yeah. So that was an established team? Yes. Mm -hmm. You're 16 years old, right? Were you scared like the youngest as kid there? <laughs> scared to death. <laughs> yeah, uh, but, the, but they were... The team, my teammates, they, 
they were good to me, you know, they, they, uh, they understood the rookie. Did they take you under their wing then? Uh, I don't know, they took me under their wing, but they were helpful. You know, they, uh, they uh, encouraged, encouraged you to stick in there, hang in there, you know. In your heart of hearts, what position did you really want to play? Mark, I wanted to play, period. I never was, I never said I'd rather play this position or I'd rather play that position. If they wanted me to play the outfield, I was ready. If they wanted me to play the infield, I was ready. You're 16 years old. I mean, you can't enlist in the military when you're 16. Um, I would imagine you signed a contract, but your parents had to sign a contract yeah. as well to let yeah. you do this. Yeah. Do you remember the terms of the contract? Oh, God. No. <laughs> All I was concerned about was my name on there. <laughs> <laughs> Before they changed their mind. <laughs> How about this part of the contract? How much were you getting paid to do this? $55. A week? A week. $55. That was making more than my dad at the steel mill. Do you think that bothered your dad at all? No. My, my dad was very supportive of me. Well, my whole family was, but no. He wouldn't have cared if... <laughs> He wouldn't have cared if I was, wasn't even getting paid He'd have, just to, for to give, getting me that opportunity. Where was that money going? What did you do with that $55 a week? Oh, most of it came home. Most of it I sent home. Your yeah. folks then yeah. banked it for you, did they? Yeah. I beg your pardon? They put it in the bank for you? Jeez, uh, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Did you get a nickname? Did you get your nickname while you were in spring training? No. I didn't get it till I went on the tour. Okay. And what was the nickname that you got? Hustle. And Hustle. Because? Because. Well, I, I, I just, you know, I just was in every game. I, 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 uh, I tried to do my best. I, I ran out everything. I, you know, just... Who gave you the nickname? I don't know. Some of the kids on the team, I guess. Some of the other players. They start calling me, start calling me because I'd be running down, get a walk and run down to first base. And say, Way to hustle. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed when you came in this morning, too, you had a definite spring in your step. You oh. moved out quickly, so yeah. you still got that. <laughs> I guess so. Tell me about the role of the chaperone, because you said your mother wasn't going to let you play until she had a chance no, to meet she the wasn't, chaperone. No, she wasn't, until she got down there and saw that everything was, and that <clears throat> chaperones were very important to our league, and especially to us teenagers. You know, we, uh, we were, there were a few of us on the team, a couple of teenagers on each team, and uh, we, uh, she made sure we had housing. She picked out the, you know, uh, the housing for us of where we stayed when we were in our home city. And uh, she made all the arrangements for us who roomed together and all of that. And then she kept an eye on us, you know. If uh, uh, we couldn't go, go out, you know, sometimes the, the boys in the stands would ask us to go to dinner or uh, to the movies. and. Uh, we couldn't go unless it was approved by the chaperone. Would have to, she'd have to talk to them to see where we were going or whatever. Would she go with you sometimes? No, no, she never went with us, but she, she had to know where we were going and that. And I have a funny story about that. Go ahead. <laughs> my chaperone, the one that my mom met in, in uh, uh, spring training, I was asked to go out I can remember what a dinner, movie, whatever, and he would go out. And I said to him, I says, well, you have to talk to the chaperone first. <laughs> he gave me that kind of look. <laughs> and he said, okay. So anyway, uh, I introduced him to, to Helen. Helen was her name. I introduced him to Helen, and <clears throat> I waited, and pretty soon he came back, and he's, he's laughing like anything. And he said to me, I didn't want to marry you. I only wanted to take you out. 
So I imagine she, she must have wanted to know everything. And, uh, but that's the way Helen was. She, she was an, uh, uh, an ex-Marine. She was a, a 30, 35 year career Marine. In, uh, uh, anyway, she was in uh, World War II as a master gunnery sergeant. So she was a, a, a she kept us on our toes. We, we, she was strict with us. Did you resent that? No, no, not at all. And only because my mom told, you know, when my mom took me down and met the chaperone and, and uh, uh, I heard my mom and her talking, you know, and my mom saying, you know, it, uh, I, 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 before I leave her, I want to make sure, you know, that she's taken care of, because she's only 16. And I remember Helen saying, don't worry, Mrs. Berkovich, she said, she'll be taken care of. So no, I never resented that. Would your chaperone ever hesitate to pick up the phone and call your folks if there was something going on? Oh, I would think she would. I don't know. I don't think she ever had to. I was, I was so worried that I, I, I didn't want to do anything wrong that would get me out of the league, you know, because some girls were suspended and fined and things, and I, I never wanted that to happen to me. Uh, so I, I tried to, you know, be, be good. <laughs> I remember uh, reading about this in the, in the movie as well, and they're talking about the early days of the league, that the players were required to go to charm school to learn mm -hmm. how to be proper ladies. Yeah. Was that still going on no. when you were in the league? No, I, I didn't come in until 49. So by then, uh, that charm school only lasted the one year, the first year. And uh, <clears throat> then after that, they, they discontinued it. So by the time I got in, they knew we were ball players. You know, the fans knew we were ball, and not just the exhibition out there of girls in skirts. Well, tell me about the rules of conduct, though, that you had. To... <clears throat> we had a whole list of conduct rules. A curfew, of course. Uh, you you were never could be seen in public in slacks. You always had to be either in a dress or a skirt. If you came out of your hotel room into the lobby, you, just to get a newspaper, you had to be in a skirt or a dress. If you got off the bus at two o'clock, because in those days, you know, we had to make stops, <laughs> bus stops. If it was two o'clock in the morning and you got off the bus to go to the restroom or go into a, get a, a Coke or whatever, you had to put on a skirt or a uh, a dress. What were you wearing on the bus that you had to put Sh on clothes? Shorts. Oh. You know, shorts, jeans, uh, things like that. Uh, out, of the, out of the public you could wear, but if you ever w w went into the public, you, you could never be in, in slacks. Now, I know that initially <laughs> they were teaching the, the girls things like how to put on makeup, how to walk, how to do those things. Yeah. Were you still expected to to be presenting we, yourself yeah. as young ladies rather yeah, than we, athletes? Yeah, we were required to wear, wear lipstick. You know, they, they said we should wear lipstick and that. And uh, <clears throat> But it was hard, you know, keeping your fingernails in that uh, just so. Uh, you know, a lot of times <laughs> you get dirt under them, things like that. But Was that that part of the experience kind of new to you? It sounds like you weren't worried about wearing lipstick when no, you were... No, no. Yeah, this was new to me because, right, when I played with the boys, they didn't care. With... Anything they did special with the hair? Did you have to keep the hair short? <clears throat> yes. It, it, it couldn't be any, any longer than, than shoulder length. The, the team you were on, what was the first team that you joined then? When you went to spring training, what, what did Muskegon. The... Okay. Did you play the season with Muskegon that year in 1949? Yeah. And how many girls were on a team? I think we carried it 18 girls on a roster. I think that's what it is. So what was the average age of the girls on the team? I would say 20s, maybe 25, 25. Were there some of these girls then that had been playing in the league for quite a while? Yeah. Uh-huh. 
In fact, the, um, the, the one lady I remember, and, well, the reason is her, her, the statue that's in Cooperstown today is a, a, a replica of, of Mickey McGuire, who was a catcher on our Muskegon Lassie's team. And 1949 was my first year in the league, and that was her last year in the league. So there were girls that had been around. Now this is kind of a history question, and most of this was happening before you got there, but I wonder, I, I, what was surprising to me was essentially it started that the, the team was playing softball rules. Yeah, they started out softball, and then I think they only played one year of softball and then converted to sidearm, a sidearm and then converted to overhand. And what I also read that surprised me, you know, you start with playing softball rules with a regulation softball, and it sounds like the ball gradually got smaller. It and did. I assume harder as well. It did. It was, but it, in uh, uh, the end of the league, it was a 10 inch ball. And then, uh, then is, they, that the, is that a regulation baseball no, sign? No, a regulation's nine, nine inch. Nine. Was the ball you were playing as hard as a... As yes, a, it was hard like a baseball. It was just a little bigger. Why? Ten inch. I don't know. They, <laughs> I don't know. I would assume, though, even when you're playing with your brother, you guys are playing with the regular regulation yeah, yeah. baseballs. Yeah. It, uh, I don't know. It just... It was a nice size ball. I mean, it was a. Did the did you play in the same size field as the the professional baseball no. was playing? No, we had uh, fifty five foot pitching distance, and I think it was seventy two feet base paths. And what was regulation for the for the men? You know? Ninety ninety foot and sixty feet six for the pitching. And you said overhand pitching. Overhand. I know, I've watched plenty of softball games. Those girls can really whip that softball underhand. They that. certainly can. And it's harder on the arm, isn't it, to be pitching overhand? They, that's what they say. That's why these softball girls can pitch two, three games in a row. And not have the same wear and tear in no. the uh -uh. How about the, the dimensions of the, the, the field itself? Was the fence a lot closer? Mm -hmm. Well, some, some fields we didn't have fences. It was just open. So how do you determine yeah. when there's a home run? Well, if you make it around the bases before the girl picks up the ball, throws it in. <laughs> <laughs> Were there girls that could smack out home runs? No. Well, we had some good hitters. Were you one of the girls? No, I was not a home run hitter. I was more, <clears throat> I was more a singles, doubles hitter, uh, advanced the runner, hit to the opposite field, uh, then set up, the, uh, set up the, the runners for the big hitters to come up and bring them in. Well, you always hear, especially the players today, but to be able to hit with control, like it sounds like you just did, that you were able to hit with control, is just about the most difficult skill in any kind of sport you can have. Did you always have a good eye for the ball as well? <coughs> I, I, I did, and I, and I, I, I know my, my dad used to always, because he, he was a, a good bunter. He could really lay down a bunt. And he always told me, he said, you want to be able to, to, <clears throat> to be able to lay down a good bunt, he said. And he says, whether you're, sacrificing or whether you're bunting for a base hit. He says, you, you want to be. And so he, he gave me some really, you know, uh, good pointers on how to do it, how to, where to place it, when, when, to, when to bunt it to third base, when to bunt it to first, when to bunt it back. So he gave me a lot of good pointers on that. And I, I took that with me. I was able to, and the same with hitting to right field. He, he, he used to tell me about how you know how you have to wait on the ball. You can't can't be out in front of it. 
got to wait on it and then go the opposite way. Have any and that idea? seemed to be my, uh, my way of playing. Uh, well, I guess they call it small ball. Uh, I, I, I mean, I, every once in a while I'd get a, you know, a hit double, a single double. Well, the fans love those big hitters and the home runs yeah. and that kind of thing, but managers love the small ball <laughs> yeah. sometimes. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. But How about base running? Did you guys play the, the pro base running rules as well? Uh, yeah, except that our base, baseline was shorter. But yeah, you lead off, uh, steal. 72 feet, I would imagine that stealing was a big part of the game for you. Yes. Were you and good was, at that? It was the hardest part too because of those skirts. <laughs> Man, those strawberries <laughs> when you slid. And then the problem was you, you, you just get over one and then you'd have to slide again and get another one. So we used to say, <laughs> try to hit a double so you don't have to, have to slide in. Tell me about the, uh, the uniforms then. We got a picture of one of the players behind you here. Tell me about your uniforms. The, uh, <clears throat> the uniforms were very comfortable. I'll say that for them. Very comfortable. Didn't have to worry about your blouse coming out. They were one piece. Uh, the, uh, the, the skirt, you know, you had a lot of motion. You didn't have to worry about sliding. That was the, that was the big thing with the skirts, was when you had a slide. Well, didn't the girls complain to people about it? I don't think our girls complained much. I really don't. I mean, like, like today you see these guys that go on the DL for whatever. Uh, the girls were, I don't know, we, we were tough. We, I don't remember anybody complaining, geez, I can't this, I can't do that. In other words, you first thing they the said, rules that were presented to yeah, you. Yeah, the first thing they said to us, just like in the movie, if you can't play in this, you can't play with us. And you never once questioned that? Never once, not me. <laughs> I was going <laughs> to, anything they told me, I was going to do. And surely it sounds like you don't have much tolerance for those who get picky about that. No, kind of I mean, if, if you're going to play ball, play ball. For you, it sounds like it was always for the love of the game, huh? Love of the game. How many uh, games did you play that first year? <clears throat> Jeez, I don't remember, and there's no stats, so I really don't know. I, I don't know what... Were you starting uh, that year? I, I, I used to, yeah, I used to start every one, but most of all, uh, a, a lot of times I'd go in for defensive purposes, you know, where uh, late innings and, you know, they they put me in the outfield or one of the infield positions. So that's where being a utility player can play all kinds of positions came in handy for I you. I think it, it did. It did because then it gave me a, a better chance of, of getting to play. Were you traveling around a lot with the team that year then as well? With Muskegon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the regular season. How many teams in the league, do you recall? Oh, it start well. Of course, the original was four teams. And by by the end of the season, uh, by the end of the league, it, I think it, they ended up with ten teams. But in between that time, some teams had come in and moved to another city. And they are all in the Midwest, weren't they? All in the Midwest. Those four states. Okay. So you have that experience. Um, this is what I, here's what I'd like to ask you about then. You went to spring training what month? You know roughly the date that you went? It must have been about April because I remember I had to go, I had to go to, <laughs> again here with my mom, we had to go to the school because you know school didn't get out until June yeah. and this was April and so we had to go to school to see if I could even go, leave school and uh, so they they checked my grades, and then they said that that was okay, but I'd have to take assignments with me. So I had to take an assignment and then do the assignment and then send it back to the school, and then they'd send me another assignment, and then I'd do that. So while all these girls were out at the suds bucket, I was in my hotel room doing homework. 
the suds bucket. That the sounds like they're bucket. drinking beer. No. <laughs> you weren't allowed to drink no. beer anyway. No. What was the legal age for drinking beer at the time? Uh, 21, I think. Okay. I guess. I don't know. I would imagine you're not the only one who wasn't able to go to the suds bucket. No. <laughs> Did you have a problem with keeping up with school then? <clears throat> no. At, uh, like I said, I had plenty of time. I, uh, after the game, and you know, we either went to the movies, uh, the teenagers, you know, us that couldn't go to the suds bucket, would go to the movies or, you know, shopping around town, walk around town, like that. Were you something of celebrities in wherever you went? It, it depended. Uh, some cities, yes, uh, but your home city, yes. But you're out on the road, you know, uh, in another city. Uh, if you're just in regular clothes, you know, they, they don't know you. <laughs> they don't know you. Well, in 1949, not many girls were wearing slacks out in public, were they? We're not. In 1949, you're all required to wear skirts, and that yeah. wasn't unusual at all. Right. That, yeah, that's what I mean. When you're in street clothes, nobody knows you. Even today, a ball player, is, he's out of uniform walking down the street. Unless you, you know, you're... Uh, of course, they, get, they had more exposure than we did, too. We didn't have TV cameras following us around. So after your first year in baseball, you come back for your junior year in high school, is that right? Mm -hmm. Did you miss any of the beginning of your junior year? Or was the season already over? No, the season was already over. Okay. Kind of general questions for both your junior and senior year. What was, tell me about your school year. Did you get back involved with sports in a different way once you got back to school? No, it was the same thing. A gym class, physical education. That's it. Oh, Just... you must have missed the fun of playing in the for <laughs> real, huh? Yeah. But then uh, by, by that time, you know, I was already, what, 17, 18 years old. Uh, I wasn't playing with the boys any, anymore out on the street. You weren't? No. <laughs> no. But, but did you find any girls to play with then? No. I, I just didn't. I, the, what I, if I wanted to play, I'd go with my brother. You know, if it, again, it was just shagging balls and bat, batting practice, things like that. They wouldn't like you to actually play in the games? You still had to be stuck in the outfield shagging balls? <laughs> no, I didn't get to play in the games, no. Just shag balls, and, and they'd let me bat every once in a while. But surely you were probably better than most of the boys out there. <laughs> I don't know. No, not, not my brother's team. No, oh. they, were, they were good. Okay. Your parents, were they paying close attention to your schooling? They wanted to make sure you got your high school diploma? It, they, it, my mom. She, she was just made sure. Of, and, and, and that's, like I said, that's why she came down with me, because she just wanted to make sure that the, uh, she wasn't sending me to some kind of <laughs> whatever, all these girls going Den down. Den of to, iniquity, perhaps, yeah. or something. Who knows what she was <laughs> Something thinking. like that. When you were with the teams, were you able to go to church on Sundays? Uh, always, made, always made time for that, yes. Is that something the chaperone always and, did? Yeah, on? that's where the chaperones come in. They, they always made sure that anybody who wanted, wanted to go to church was able to. So you come back for your second season. Now it's the spring of 1950. Same thing, you had to leave school a little bit early? Mm -hmm. You went to spring training with who that year? That year I went, I went with Fort Wayne, but <clears throat> I, I was only with them a short time, just weeks. And then I went on the touring team with the Sallys and the Colleens, and we toured the East Coast. Uh, did, did the touring teams have a home base? <clears throat> no. Well, I we, thought it was the Springfield Sallys. Springfield Sallys and Chicago Colleens, but we, we didn't stay any one place. We were on a bus all the time. Go, and then we'd stay at hotels. What was the purpose of the touring team? It was a, a, a kind of a, uh, uh, they wanted to get us get out there to, to recruiting, you know, to, uh, for. 
So and is this a promotional thing for the league? It, it wasn't only a promotional, but it was also a, a uh, uh, kind of a, oh, I don't know how to call it, getting more experience, I guess that's what I want to say. Getting, getting girls more experience. Uh, to so get something like a to, minor league. Team. Yeah, something like that's that's the word. Uh, but you had been playing with a regular team before, mm -hmm. so you got shipped down to the minor league, surely. Oh no! Well, uh, this was this was uh, uh, I I didn't take it like that. I took it like you know a ch a chance to to tour around the country that I'd never been away from Pittsburgh. So in the first year, you're touring around, but you're staying in the Midwest area. Yeah. Where did you go that second year when you're on these these? On the tour camps? went all through the east east coast. We were in New York. We were in uh, um, uh, small town small towns all through the all through the states. Ohio, Indiana, all all over the East Coast. We, they played a game in Yankee, we played a game, I wasn't there at that time, but they played a game in Yankee Stadium. They played a game in uh, uh, Griffith Park in DC. Did you go into the South at all? Jeez. <laughs> I'm sure we did. We, you know, we, like I said, we were everywhere. All we did, we played ball and we got on the bus. I don't think anybody cared where we went. They just took us and we went. But it was a, it was a fun, most fun time of, that, I, that I had because we were together all the time, the two teams. We, we traveled together. We got to know each other. We got to, uh, you know, it was just a lot of fun traveling around together. And as long as you like to spend most of your time on a bus, I yeah, guess. Yeah, it, it was. It was a, it was a, a grueling uh, schedule. But hey, Mark, when you're 16, 17 years old, that kind of stuff doesn't bother you. Now, if I had to ride on a bus for a week, I don't know whether... And I think you already alluded to this. There's no bathroom on the bus. <laughs> right. And let's face it, the roads in 1950 were a bit different from the roads they today. Huh? They certainly were. They were. And I assume that didn't pay much attention to it because that's all you knew at the time. Yeah. Two lane roads. That... Yeah. Tell me about all these different stadiums then. I mean, he must have seen a huge variety of different stadiums when he went from place to place. We played mostly in minor league, minor league parks. So we'd have to move the bases. Oh. Because, you know, they're set up for 90-foot bases, and ours were seven, I think they were 72. So that brought the bases in on the infield grass. How well attended were these games? Oh, we got good crowds. Because they they had did a lot of publicity, you know, it was advertised in those towns. So you had thousands of people in the yeah, towns? I would say yeah, we got. And I would imagine these are more intimate kind of stadiums than the big leagues would play. They are, they are. The fans were a lot closer to the action. Yes. yes. Did you like that part of it too? Mm -hmm. I don't know what. Oh, my interest was. It was not the fans. It was the game. My interest was the game. What did you do with all your spare time then? It sounds like most of it was spent on the bus oftentimes. Yeah. Well, we, uh, we uh, like I say, we did movies and went to the movies. And, and, and in the, some of the cities we were there, you know, they had interesting uh, places to go. Uh, uh, museums and, and uh, parks and zoos and... You know, that kind of stuff, just what was, uh, the, uh, what the city had to offer. Did the chaperone often go with you on tours of some of these places? Uh, no, I don't think, no, I think she let us more or less be on our own for those kind of things. And you're underage, so you're not drinking, obviously. Were some of the girls smoking at the time? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Most, 
I hate to say it, but most all of them smoked and drank. How about you? Did you get... The... Uh -huh. That was not unusual. I mean, the warriors, there was an awful lot more women who started smoking at that time, didn't they? Yeah. No, I, I didn't. Uh, I, I, I did smoke, but it was, <clears throat> it was already after I was working and that, and I, I got into a bowling league and you know how bowling leagues are. That's all they do is smoke and drink. But I, ne I never could take the drink. <laughs> I took the smoke, and I only took the smoke for, for a short time because I, that was another thing. I, and you know, at, at that age, the <clears throat> you have that peer pressure. You know, everyone's smoking. Oh, come on, have a cigarette, have a drink. I gotta believe, I'm trying to envision what life is like on the bus, and you have these older girls, more mature girls on the bus yeah. with you, and they're probably smoking all the time. Yeah. You had plenty of secondhand smoke on yeah. the bus, oh, I sure. would guess. Sure, we did. How about, uh, where were you staying overnight then? Hotels? Hotels. Uh, motel, sometime a motel. Uh, but mostly hotels. Did they ever put you up with families when you get to some no. towns? Mm -mm. How about the food you're getting? You're eating restaurant food all the time. Restaurant. Mm -hmm. Two dollars a day meal money. Pardon me? Two dollars a day meal money. Okay, so you got to choose your own menu. So yep. you don't, I, I guess two dollars a day is plenty of money at the time. A lot of money. I could save a lot out of that two dollars. You get tired of eating restaurant food? No, I, I, I wasn't. I, I'm sure some of the other girls were, but no, it, I, it was good. And what if you can give me a sense of the kind of camaraderie that you have with that oh, traveling team? You do, you do. I mean, the, the, even today, the girl, some of the girls, that, at the, when we go to the reunions, we get in a little huddle and, you know, reminisce. Remember the, when? The stories get bigger and bigger. <laughs> well, what, what are some of the stories you remember from that traveling year that you had? Anything that stick with you? Oh, yeah, we had, uh, we had a lot of, uh, of uh, uh, that, uh, the, the fields that we played on, a, a lot of, sometimes they weren't really, you know, uh, up to par fields. And we had a lot of funny incidents with, uh, you know, uh, bat hops balls, and, and then some some fields we had cows in the back, you know, <laughs> in the backfield. So if the ball went in there, and they have to someone have to go in the cow field to pick, get the ball, that kind of stuff. Yep. Well, cows leave little presents out there. That's in the what field. I mean. So if you had, had to get get yourself into that cow field to pick up a ball. It's a lot of little funny things like that, but we we had good time. It was a lot of fun. And did you girls have to do your own laundry? Yeah. And right. where at the the uh, the hotels sometimes had laundry. They had laundry. Otherwise, we'd go into town. How about uh, trying to keep in touch with your family? You're going from place to place. I'm sure there's letters, but trying to track down what town you're going to be and where the letter should be spent. And, and that's another thing. Uh, 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 none of the cities we played in was close to Pittsburgh. And so my dad only got to come to one game. One, uh, one game was there in, in, uh, 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 near Pittsburgh, and uh, he got he got to come to that, and that, that's the only game anyone in my family ever saw. Yeah, hadn't you that one game. about that? I'm sure he was disappointed he didn't yeah. get to see more. Yeah, but he, you know, he was working, and uh, in those days you just didn't take, and you didn't get vacations, you know, so he just grabbed what he could and, and came down. And, you remember what he told you after he watched you play? Oh. I don't know. I do remember we went out to dinner together, and, and I was just so happy to see him. And, and we just, we talked about the game, of course, and, 
That was funny. And he asked me, I remember him saying, well, what do you think? Do you, uh, <clears throat> are you having a good, that, that's the first thing he said to me, are you having a good time? I said, it's the time of my life. <laughs> do you remember what position you played that game? Uh, I think, oh, I know. Uh, in fact, it, uh, it was a, uh, a first base. And uh, I remember it seemed like I had, uh, in the teens, put outs, it seemed like everything they hit was ground balls. And so all my, most all the things were put outs. So I was, I was happy I was, got in the ball game. I now mean, you got lots of action. And I got game. a lot of action on that. How about, obviously most of the places you go, you know, are close to Pittsburgh. So how were you able to keep in touch? Mainly through letters or phone calls or what? Uh, a telephone, I used, to, I used to call. How often were you able call. to do that? Mm, probably not as often as I should have, but I, uh, I called maybe a couple times a month. Did you call collect? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> what else? What else? <laughs> When uh, you were growing up and during that time, were your, your parents on a, what's the term, where there was lots of other people on the same line? Oh yeah, we had a four party line. Party line. Four, four party. In other words, everybody else could listen in on the conversation? That was it. Did they? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they did. Okay. You were on this traveling team. And you're playing for the Springfield Sallies? Well, I play for both, <laughs> wherever they, wherever they, see, because we traveled together. So they tried to keep the teams evenly matched, you know. So and, the Collins and the Sallies are, Sally. and you're playing each other I, all the time. Right, we play each other, that's all, just play each other. And sometime I'd be on the Collins and sometime I'd be on the Sallies, depending on where they needed somebody. What an interesting concept. And the manager, the, the manager was making all those decisions? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Trying to keep the, the game yeah. competitive? Uh, yes. I mean, they didn't want one team to have all the good players and the other team. So he, they switched them around, you know. So we had some good games, you know, because we had a good competition. Did you ever play catcher? Never. Did no, you ever nope. pitch? Uh, you know, I don't ever remember pitching, and I see in the, one of those record books it says I pitched one game. Well, if, they, if I pitched one game, I don't, I don't remember it. Mustn't have been, mustn't have been a, a memorable game. <laughs> <laughs> Were you mostly playing outfield or infield? Uh, I really played uh, both. I, I don't know that I played any one more than the other. I, one night I'd be in an outfield, the next night I'd be in the infield. And I think I've asked you this before, and I know what your answer is going to be, but I'll ask one more time, Shirley. What position did you really like the most? <laughs> yeah, I just like to play. <laughs> I don't care. Put me wherever you want. As Put me in, as, coach. As long as I get to play. The managers were all the managers for all the teams, men. Uh, the, yes, uh, basically, one, uh, one team, I think Dottie Green with Rockford, she, she, I think she managed, or not, no, not with Rockford, with somebody, she was a player manager. And the, the, the uh, uh, Colleen's and Sally's in our travel team, uh, one of the one of the teams had a, a, la a lady man, but she didn't play. She just she just managed. Yeah, she just managed. But the men, mostly did, men. Did you ever wonder about that? How no. come it's just the guys who are managing? No, we had we had Hall of Famers managing us in the, in our league. We had Max Carey. We had Jimmy Fox. We had uh, Davy Bancroft, and uh, was the Tom Hanks character modeled after Jimmy Fox? No, well, that's what they say, but that really that gives a bad name to Jimmy. He was he was a 
a wonderful man, a wonderful manager in that. Uh, I'm not saying uh, Jimmy didn't drink. I mean, he. Uh, well, but they're he, baseball players after yeah, all. Oh, sure. Uh, but he'd never, he'd never come to a game or that, you know. Hmm. And never walked in the dressing room like the movie. <laughs> Relieving himself in front of the girls and things right. like that. Huh? That kind of stuff. In other words, you were excited to have these guys managing for you. Sure. I mean, uh, we, uh, Max, I can remember Max Carey taking us down to the, uh, to the sand, you know, at the water where the sand is, and teaching us sliding. That's where I learned the hook slide, was from Max Carey. What's a hook slide? Well, it's when you're, it's, they don't do that. Now they go in head first. See, well, what we were taught was, you, of course, you're facing the, the uh, fielder, so you know whether she's going this way or this way for the ball. So if she's coming, if you're going down here and she's over here with the ball, then you just gr grab the toe of your foot on that bag and you slide this way. And then all she has is your toe to, to tag. Excellent. It's more of those techniques that your dad was probably teaching you from day one, huh? Yes, I, I, I think so. Now, you've already alluded to this a little bit, but you're going from town to town, and uh, the boys sometimes ask for dates after the games? Sure, sure. How often did but you do that? But we had the same, same procedure. <laughs> yeah. Any memorable events in that? I would assume they had a pretty close curfew that you had to pay yes, attention yes, to. Yes, yes, we did. But no, no, nothing. Like I said, uh, it was usually a movie or dinner or something or to one of the uh, events. Like sometimes they had, um, the city was, had a carnival or some sort of fair, go to that, things like that. Did you ever get the sense that some of the boys were resentful that hey, this is just girls playing baseball? Well, see, by, by the time I came into the league, that was all over with. That first part of the league, uh, I would say, yes, they had. But by 49, uh, they knew we could play baseball, that we weren't just an exhibition. So I, I never uh, experienced any of that. Okay. Well, your statistics, at least what's in the on the website. I mean, if it's on the internet, it must be true. Well, everything you've said so far, there's a lot of things that were wrong on the internet. Yeah. But what I saw is that you played 20 <clears throat> games and 77 at bats. It sounds like you had much more experience than that that, that second year when you were on the traveling team. Mm -hmm. Yes. But they gave you a batting average at 286. That's a pretty respectable batting average. Mm -hmm. Does that sound about right? Yeah. And your on-base average was 327. Yeah. So you must have known how to watch that pitcher and <clears throat> figure out how you can get walks and get on base quite a bit. Yeah, that, uh, the travel team was probably my best, best, uh, those, those stats are probably more correct. So that you, but you thought of, you played your best ball that, that I, year? I think I probably played my best ball in that, in that league. How fast do you suppose those pitchers were coming in across the base? You know, uh, Mark, those girls threw hard. And the only way I could tell was by the imprint of the stitches on my leg. <laughs> so I knew they were, they were throwing hard. So you got a couple nice bruises, I, not, not to mention a, the sliding, yeah, huh? I have a couple nice bruises from pitchers. Which slide were you sliding in on that you were scraping your leg up on then? Uh, well, you, we tried. You, you, you started out one way, and then if you got one, you tried to make sure you slide <laughs> on this side next time. <laughs> okay. Here's a corny question for you, but i got to ask it anyway. Did the girls on the bus, did you start singing songs and things like that on the bus? Oh, sure. Did you sing, sing that victory song occasionally? We sang that. We sang the, the songs of our era. <laughs> you are my sunshine. <laughs> that kind of stuff. Um, 
The girls, some of the girls played cards. You know, a lot of girls played uh, cards and and slept a lot. <laughs> you know, because it was so long stretches between and and uh, so till you get to the next city. You know, you just you just finished a ball game. You hop on the bus and you're going to the next town. Uh, you know, you're tired. Take a little snooze. You had a chance, though, I assume, to shower up before you got on the yeah. bus? Yeah. Okay. So that's your second year, a memorable year. Mm -hmm. Put a lot of miles on the bus that year, I would guess. We did. And did you get back to start your senior year in time? I did. Started it, but that was then left in, <coughs> left in April again. Still so. had homework to do. So I still had my homework. Were you going back to the same high school every year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I saw something that said you changed schools, high school. I, t I uh, not during my playing time. Uh, I went one year uh, to a school in South Pasadena, California. Uh, my freshman year, I, I came out to California to see if I liked it. And, and I liked it. Your parents weren't in California, though? No, this was in 40, this was 48, 48. And uh, I went back just for a vacation to California because I had some, my aunt was out here and my cousins were out here. So my mom let me go for a, come out here for a vacation, to California for a vacation. And so uh, I liked it. I really liked it. And I wanted to stay. So I asked my mom if I could stay and, and go to school here for that one year. year. And, and so that's what I did. I went for that one year to South Pasadena High School. Well, that's quite an adventure too, Shirley, because your parents are still back in the Pittsburgh area, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I really like California. Uh, I like the, the weather. You know, I was, I'm thinking to myself, you can play ball all year round here. <laughs> Were you staying with your mom's sister? Uh, no, with my mo mom's brother oh, and his okay. wife and his, my cousins. So I, and they were all, we were all about the same age. So I went to school with them. And then, uh, then the next year was when I went uh, to uh, spring, uh, Muskie, my first season, 49. Okay. So that was just that, that one year. Then I went back to Pittsburgh for to finish up my, my uh, school. Well, you'd already had your taste of adventure, though, living with your relatives out in California for mm -hmm. a year. Yeah. That's interesting. And who were you playing with there with the boys? You didn't have your brother pick up no, games, did I, I only went to school, you know, what they had in school, and that was not, like I said, back to physical education. <laughs> OK. You're coming back now for your senior year. You're going to, not Pittsburgh, where was the town that you were growing up with in? Where did you go to high school? Swissville. Swissville. Swissville High School. Were you something of a celebrity in high school because no. you were a pro baseball player? I don't know if I was a celebrity. I mean, I, I was just back with my friends, you know, all the kids I knew. I don't think, I don't know that they were impressed with, <laughs> I don't think they even knew. What, you know, that was, in the East, that wasn't even known. Nobody knew there was, they knew I played baseball, but they never knew, you know, where or when or. They weren't curious uh, about it, you no, don't think? No, uh -uh. I don't remember anybody saying, gee. Now, when I back, went back for my high school reunion, our 50 year high school reunion, oh yeah, then, cause the movie was out and, you know, now they knew everything. But when I just went back to school, we were just back to school buddies. Ah, interesting. Um, and then you get back in the same routine, and you had to be frustrated there weren't the same sports opportunities you had in the summertime, huh? Right, right. What did you think you wanted to do after you got your high school diploma? I thought baseball was my career. I planned on 16 years old. I planned on playing forever. I thought I'd play till I was at least in my 40s. That you'd and be I, able to play pro ball. Yes, I was playing in American, All-American Girls Professional Baseball League 
for my career. That was it. I had made no, uh, my schooling was not geared toward anything. Uh, I, I didn't plan on working anywhere. I, I just, I was going to play in that All-American Girls Baseball League. Did you ever flirt with the idea of, you know, maybe if once I get too old, I might want to manage or coach baseball? No, I'm just interested in playing. And then the, in 1951, my last year with, in the league with Rockford. Rockford Peaches. Uh -huh. And you mentioned, you, you've said several times, you're talking about here, referring to California. Well, now we're in Rockford, so this is yeah, well, that where was, you finished your, your baseball career. Yeah, and that, I, I saw at that time that this league wasn't going anywhere. I mean, uh, the cities were closing down, teams were, you know, being taken over by the city, and, and you, could, you just knew it, you know, you just knew. But it was one of the hardest decisions I ever had to make, whether to continue and see what happens to the league, or I had an opportunity now to get a job. So I said to myself, I'm single. I'm gonna, apparently gonna have to support myself for the rest of my life. So I better consider uh, something with a little more security. And I weighed those two things and I thought, oh God, I just, I don't know what to do. Well, I finally made this decision that I was gonna take the job at the uh, telephone company. And uh, after 30 years with the telephone company, I decided I made the right decision. What phone company did you go with? Pacific Bell. Out in California? California, yeah. Yeah, I stayed after I came back from Rockford. After my last year with Rockford, I spent the 1952 back in Pittsburgh, just kind of floundering around, trying to make up my mind what I should do, whether I should come back the next season, whether I should take this job. And the siren call of California was stronger than baseball finally. That well, year, huh? it, it, it wasn't stronger, but it was just a... A, a, a no-brainer decision. I mean, it, it was... Well, I wanted to spend more time talking about that last year with the Rockford Peaches because to a certain extent, I got to believe now you're playing for one of the main teams and mm -hmm. that you've arrived now. Mm -hmm. You've arrived. This is the big leagues as mm -hmm. far as the girls baseball is concerned. Is that how you felt about it? Yeah, sure. What positions did you play that year? <laughs> Again? Same whatever. thing, huh? Whatever. Did you get in most of the games? Um, not a lot of them. I, I was still, you know, uh, th they had some built-in players at that time. Uh, you know, players that were, uh, had those positions sewed up. I mean, they were, so. So apparently you didn't start the games, most times. I, I, I've started a few games, but most of mine were, uh, uh, you know, filling in. Off the bench. Who were the stars for the Rockford Peaches that you remember? Well, there were the, the Dottie Kamenchecks and the Snooky Doyles and the Dottie Ferguson and uh, Alice Pollitt and Richie. Uh, who else, Richie? They had some, well, they were the cream of the league, the Rockford Peaches. They always had a good team. But they also always had the best, <laughs> the best players, or most of the best players. A lot of these girls have been playing for quite a few years. Oh, already, yeah. It sounds like. since a, a lot of them since the league began practicing. And you're now 18 years old. How do they treat the, the new rookie coming on oh. the teams? The, the same, like I said, the, the gals in the league were all so supportive of, of you know, we were a team, and, and that's the way they took it, is, as, as a, you're part of the team now. Any special memories of that year? Um, I don't know. 
that that was a, a, a year of, uh, like I told you, kind of indecision year. I was wavering between do I stay, do I go. So it was wasn't really a, uh, like my other years where I'm you know I'm going to play and I'm going to play. This this year was kind of a. Uh, what are you going to do, Shirley? Are you going to go get a job, real job, <laughs> or are you going to stick it out and see what happens? I assume that you didn't love the game less. No, not at all. That you are just maturing a little bit. I was just trying to be realistic. Was there one specific thing that caused you to really start to rethink this whole equation? This is a gradual process for you. A gradual. Like I said, it was a, that, that season, that, that whole season where, you know, what do you do? Do you, do you stay on or have, take this opportunity that I have to get this job? So there was somebody who was specifically offering you a job out in California. Yes, yes. How did that happen? Uh, well, when I, when I went back for... Uh, for the last season uh, in the P my cousin was uh, was uh, working there uh, for the telephone company for Pacific uh, yeah and she told me she said that they were only hiring a few a few people and she says if you if you want to get in there she says you're gonna have to do it you know that the job might Get not the be job there the next because year? It, yeah, it might not be there. So that's when it all, then, and then that's when I start thinking, oh, what do I want to do? What was the job? I'm sorry? What was the job you were getting offered? Oh, it was, a, it, it was a, it, just a job with a, an uh, uh, entry-level job with the telephone company. So, well, what I read was that you were an operator. Uh, they, that was the entry level job, mm -hmm. and then ended up in the engineering department. How, so, when did that happen? How many years were you working? I there? worked for thirty years. <laughs> when did you move to the engineering department, though? How how many? Years oh, I I worked nine years as an operator. Then I moved to the what they called the plant department. It was where I worked with the installers on. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, I would assign the equipment for them to, to use uh, to, to put a new telephone in and give them the telephone numbers and that. And then I went into the engineering department, the local engineering department, which where we, we set up the, uh, the trunking from, like if you want to make a call from here to there, uh, the lines that connect those two places, set up that. And then... Uh, I did the same for the toll uh, trunking uh, engineering department, oh, and, and this was then for long distance, like here to New York, here to Georgia, here to whatever. And uh, and then the uh, my end, ending up there, I did. Uh, we put in the new electronic switching systems, which was a big thing then, you know. So. Yeah, and watching the old films, you know. The role of an operator in 1951, boy, the telephone industry went through huge changes in those 30 oh. years with you were with them. You couldn't dial here to there. You had to go through the operator. So nine years later, that wasn't the case anymore, was it? No. Well, then you got to see this revolution in the in telecommunications. In the, in the telephone industry, yes. Then we went to, uh, like I said, and then the end the, with the electronic switching systems. All the before when they they what they called bays and switches when you dial a number go ch -ch 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 now everything this electronic system go, <laughs> gone. Were you when did you retire? 1983. And from what I know from other people who were in in the telephone business, had a good retirement system, didn't they? Well. The only reason I retired was uh, <clears throat> with the telephone company, you had to be 55 years old 
and have 30 years service to retire on full benefits. Well, in 1983, uh, Judge Green <laughs> said AT&T was a monopoly, and so they were going to break them up. So when that happened, of course, they were getting, wanted to get rid of people. So they said, if you had 30 years service, regardless of age, you could retire with full benefits. So I had planned on retiring at 55 anyway. I, when I went to work, I, I set my, my goal at that 30, 30 years and, and 55 years old. So I was just five years short of my, what I planned for, but it worked out fine for me. I, I retired and uh, uh, now I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> I thought that might be part of the explanation because I knew that's when the, the courts had busted up the, the old bell yeah. system. Yeah. So that part of American history you went through as well. Yes. Now I'm going to pull you back to 1954 and now you're working for Pacific Bell but I'm sure you're paying attention to what was going on in the league still. How would you, what were you feeling when you heard that the league was dying? Well, the first thing I was I was sad. I was I, I really felt bad because, like I said, I I know it wasn't just just me, but I I know all the girls were uh, devastated by the by the fact that that they um, stopped that league. But then I thought, surely you made the, the a decision. Apparently, it was the right decision. So you're just going to have to forget the other. You, you, you didn't, it wasn't your career, so, and you had to move on to something else. And you did it, and that was it. But I did, I felt, and, and then when we, coming to the reunions, you know, when we, we talked about it, how all of us, you know, we all wished that we could have played longer. Either that we, were, we should have been born earlier, <laughs> or the league could have, should have lasted longer. There's lots of theories about what happened to the league, why it ended up dying. What's your, what's your understanding? Well, of I, I just know from what I hear, what, what people tell me. I don't really know. Uh, they said two big things uh, was the war ending and television coming in. Now, the big thing I would think would be television because now people didn't need to go to the leave their living room to go to the ball game. They could sit there and watch it, watch it on TV. So why get up out of your easy chair and go sit on a hard bench somewhere? But your dad bet still went to Pittsburgh Pirates games. We did, we did. And if he were alive, we still probably would be going. <laughs> okay. Part of the explanation I heard is they had the different management system. And you kind of hinted at that before, that the local towns were owning it rather than having yeah, some the league, the league league promoting all these yeah. things. Yeah, I think that, that probably was another reason. Like I said, I don't know, I, I heard all kind of stories. Did you continue to play sports when you were out there in the Pacific? You know, I tried to. <laughs> I tried this recreational s stuff. All they want to do was get the game over with and go to the bar. And that wasn't who you were. That's huh? not, that wasn't me. But that's got to be frustrating that you can't was, find that same is. level of competition. No, it was. So then I did some bowling and a little bit of golf. And that, Are you a good bowler? That, I carried a 177 average. I, yeah, I, I bowled on a travel team with, I was low man on the totem pole. <laughs> I bowled with some good, but that too, that was, uh, that wasn't baseball. And yeah, how about golf? Were you a good golfer? Uh, golf was okay, but I, I, golf was too frustrating to me. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, God meant uh, you to be a baseball player. So. I think so. Uh, that's it, Mark. I, I wasn't made to be a golfer. How close were you following the baseball games then in the professional leagues? I, I do. I, I follow, of course, it's, most of it's on TV. I do try to get that 
to some of the Dodger games and the Angel games as much as, as much as I can, but most of it's on TV, television. And uh, I, I really miss the Pirates, though, because they're never on television. <laughs> But the Pirates have broken your heart a few times oh, over the years, haven't I know, they? I but I still love them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you a couple other things in terms of women's involvement in sports in the United States. And I don't know if you remember this much, but 1972, Congress passed Title IX. I do. And it really changed opportunities for girls in high school and college, didn't it? Right, it certainly did. I wonder if you can reflect on how important that piece of legislation has been. <clears throat> that was a beginning. That was a beginning. Once they, once they got Title IX through, that was the beginning. But now, we've got this, we're still not all the way there. We've still got a, a lot. Just like what we're doing today with our uh, <clears throat> IWBC organization that we're trying to get going. There's all these girls out there today playing baseball and no, no uh, uh, support from Major League Baseball. Major League Baseball supporting softball. Now, why would Major League Baseball support softball when we've got all these girls playing softball? I don't know if you were here for the tournament. We had 200 girls down here playing in a tournament. Baseball, so, right? Baseball. So that's what I mean. Title IX's the beginning, but we've got a long way to go yet to get, before we can get girls into things other than softball. I hate to say that. So. <laughs> in other words, as far as you're concerned, you're not going to get there until the girls can play baseball. Until the girls have a league of their own not just play baseball, but have a league of their own. The major leagues have got their league, and that, that's another question I get asked a lot. Am I ready to see a girl in the major leagues? And I, my answer is definitely not. I don't want to have to compete against a man. I think that the girls, we have so many skills in that that we need to show off and you're not going to do it playing with a major league ball club. There's no girl that's going to hit a ball 440 feet. There's no girl that's going to throw 95 to 100 mile an hour. So we need, we need something that where girls can show their skills that we have, but not against men. The equivalent of the girls basketball leagues and the girls professional soccer league and some right. other sports Absolutely. and golf where they've excelled. Absolutely and that's what baseball, girls baseball means. You see it happening in the near future? I hope it happens in my lifetime. I really do. Uh, whether it will or not, I don't know. We're pushing hard for it, but who knows? In 1982, Sounds like the All-American Girl Professional Baseball League decided that they needed to have an association. Were you involved with that? Uh, I wasn't personally, but it was, <clears throat> it was uh, put together by some of the girls who were in the league early, and uh, they put a players association together and got, got in touch with, through media, got in touch with as many girls as they could that played in the league, and now we have a yeah, we have a players association. Was this just about having an opportunity to get together and have yes. reunions, or yes. was it something more than that? Well, right now, right then, when when it first started, yes, that's what it was it, to to get us all together after 50 years or whatever it was, you know, just to have a chance to get together. But it's become much more than that, hasn't it? Well, now we're now we're trying to get out into the public eye. We go to, we like to go to like uh, all-star game, fan fest, things like that. With the goal of getting a league of your own eventually? Well, that, yeah, that's the, that's the, the uh, uh, main thing. So the, is the association specifically actively 
promoting that concept? Uh, yeah, we do. I think we'd like that. I think yes. That I don't know that we're promoting it. <laughs> where if anybody else is, but we are. And. Uh, well, those kind of decisions always end up being money, and there's somebody with lots of money saying, I, if we had a league of their own, would anybody come to the games? Can we make money doing yeah. this? Do you yeah. think that could be the case? Well, we'll never know, will we? I don't know. The WNBA is surviving. Why couldn't WMLB <laughs> <laughs> survive? But we need the backing of Major League Baseball. It sounds like you're a bit disappointed in Major League Baseball. Yeah, I, I, I am. I, I find, although they did, uh, a couple months ago, we had, they had a, what they called a Trailblazers um, tournament in Compton, California. And uh, Major League Baseball put it on, and it was a girls' baseball tournament. Now, whether they're going to continue to uh, promote that and whether we have another one next year or not, I don't know. 1988 sounds like it was a big year as well. That was the year that uh, apparently the Baseball Hall of Fame decided to have a, an exhibit about your league, not about specific individuals, but about women in baseball. That's right. Were you there that year? I, I certainly was. I certainly was. Tell me about that experience. Oh, that was, a, that was a great experience. First, just to have the opportunity to be recognized by the Hall of Fame. I mean, that, that in itself was something. And then, of course, when we went down there and saw the movie <laughs> elaborated on the exhibit. I mean. A documentary that, on it? Uh, no, the the movie. Oh, the League of Their Own. The League of Their Own movie. It, it uh, uh, made it look huge. It's it's not that. It was just a case, you know, with uniforms and balls and things like that, memorabilia stuff in it. Uh, but it was still the most exciting thing that 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 I had in baseball was that that unveiling of uh, of that uh, case with seeing women in baseball and then seeing all our uniforms and bats and balls, things like that. And then, uh, of course, Penny Marshall was there, the director of the movie. This is several years before the movie came out. Uh -huh. And she talked to all the girls. And I guess she, in her, as being a movie person, thought that this would make a good movie. And so she went back and did what she has to do and got the thing together. Was she talking about the possibility of making a movie yes. in 88? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's four years later. It took her that long, I think, to get backing. I don't know that there would be a lot of movie people that <laughs> would would uh, want to back a, a base girls' baseball movies from the 1940s. You know, so I'm sure she had trouble getting. Hollywood is always about making money, yeah. and it's always about decision. Well, who yeah. would want to see that movie? And yeah. they had no idea how popular this that, movie is. That's been. exactly right. Were you involved in any direct way of, in the movie itself? Uh, we had consultants. I, I, I wasn't one of them, but we had consultants for the movie. But Penny Marshall said that anyone who played in the league was welcome to come to Cooperstown for the ending of the movie. So about, I don't know, about 50 of us, I guess, showed up there in Cooperstown. And oh, can you imagine playing on Double Day Field? I didn't think of who was on that field. Babe Ruth. Can you? All the legends of the game. Oh all the legends that played on that field. And here we were out there playing, <laughs> pretending like we, like we were 20 again. Oh, it was wonderful. It just brought back so many memories. Did all the muscles cooperate that day? Oh, no. <laughs> it was tough. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't move as fast as we used to. But I heard you had a cameo role in the movie, though. Well, 
I had a fleeting part. It was so fleeting that if you, if you blinked, you missed me. <laughs> what player did you? Uh, I was supposed to be older Alice. Alice was the catcher in the uh, Gina movie. Gina Davis movie. It's Dina, Gina but, Davis. But uh, Alice was the backup catcher. Oh, okay. Uh, the one that... Uh, 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 That's right, because Gina Davis was a dotty, wasn't she? Gina Davis was the catcher. Alice was the backup catcher. And uh, she was very superstitious, as you know, in the movie. So anyway, I've got... So the, it, it was the scene where the... Where the uh, she comes back to the... And, and meets all the girls that she played with and then... And then I, I'm supposed to go up to her and say, uh, Dottie, having you here is good luck. <laughs> and I did that, said my line, and quickly, quickly vanished. But the line, did it stay in the movie? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, it's there. Okay. How accurate was that movie to the league that you remember? Pretty close. She did a wonderful job, Penny Marshall. I would say 85 to 90% true. Few Hollywoods in there. Chap uh, chaperone. I thought the chaperone wasn't portrayed like she should have been. The chaperones, as I told before, the chaperones were very important to our league. They, you know, they really, uh, especially for teenagers and that. And I thought she could have done a better job of portraying the chaperone instead of having them throw dirt in her face. And, Things like that. Well, and we already talked about the portrayal of the manager. Yeah. And Tom Hanks did such a per superb job, and you know, who would have known that that line that he said in the movie would be so oh, famous? Oh, isn't that something? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but that that part, and then, uh, but the way we the way we uh, uh, pull together as a team and and the bus rides and that, that was all true. We never lived all together in a big house like that, though. We lived individual host homes. But they got the sense of camar camaraderie. Yes, that. from that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Shirley, was So there, anyway, she... Was, go ahead. Yeah. Was there crying in baseball? Yeah. <laughs> there were a few tears shed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For you? Uh, yeah. Sometimes sometime emotional ones, sometimes hurt ones. Uh, any tears of joy that you remember? I'm sorry? Any tears of joy? Yes. Oh, that's what I mean. There were emotional cries and hurt ones. Did you get to meet some of the actors in the movie? We, we, uh, we got to meet uh, Madonna and Rosie O'Donnell and Gina Davis. Uh, the, uh, who we didn't meet was, uh, never, I never, never met Tom Hanks. Uh, but we met Gina and some of the uh, lesser girls that played in the movie. Uh, Tracy Reiner, who played Betty Spaghetti, and uh, Ann Ramsey and Patty Pelton. They were all on the team. I wonder, all of these big, well-known stars, are meeting you ladies who played in the league at the time. Who admired who more? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I uh, would imagine they were somewhat in awe of you. Well, they, they are, and they still are today. They come around with a, a lot on these, these things that we do and, and participate with us. And, and uh, uh, they're, they're, I think, as, as like you say, is, uh, thinking of us as stars as much as we think of them as stars. Well, that had to make the whole experience that much more special for oh, everybody. it was, it was. And we still keep in touch with a lot of them today. Like I say, they travel around with us when we go to events. Are you surprised at the success that the movie has had? Oh. I'm overwhelmed. I read, I picked up the paper one day and I, it's when the uh, Jackie Robinson uh, number 42 came out, that movie 42. And I picked up the newspaper and it said on the, the newspaper, it said that Jackie Robinson, uh, that number 42, was a huge success. It came in second 
as far as uh, movies, baseball movies was concerned. And it said, number one was League of Their Own. Oh, I fell off the chair. I thought, oh my God, the highest grossing baseball movie ever, A League of Their Own. And all that came out of one little league that we put together and I can't believe that that league is not still in existence. Obviously the movie resonated with the audience because of that spirit and the spirit that you've been talking about for this entire interview. And you know, Mark, the kids come up to us today and thank you, thank you, thank you for getting this for us. And yet we played and didn't even know what we were doing. We had no idea that we were doing anything special. We were just playing ball. We talk about this movie. I wonder if you have your own favorite baseball movie, because there are some amazing baseball movies that have yes, been Yes, there are. Mine is The Natural. I love that movie. I love it. Well, had it anything to do with the actors involved with that? I, well, maybe, but I mean, just the story, it is, it is just, I, I just love it. I, There's a couple dramatic scenes that I love in The Natural when they hits the base, it hits the lights and the, the sparks start yeah. flying all over the place. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, I, you know, even though it's kind of fictional, uh, it, uh, I, I just love it. I love that movie. But I like all the baseball movies. I watch them all. Well, the one that the other one that I think of that's right up there with the League of Their Own for me at least is uh, Field of Dreams. Oh, feel, oh yeah, how could I forget that one? Oh yeah, that that's great. Is there something different about baseball that connects with people than some of the other sports? I don't, I don't know, unless it's just the All American Game, and people just cling to that. Apple pie, baseball. Well, one of the things I always hear that people can envision themselves playing baseball. Maybe they're not six foot eight and they can't envision themselves playing basketball or being oh, a football player because they're I not never big thought enough. of that. Yeah, that's right. Because you can be any size playing baseball. There you go. Even a five foot eight girl. Yeah, yeah, even a five foot eight girl. Looking back at those years that you were playing baseball, is there one special memory that you especially keep close to your heart? I think my, <clears throat> my mo most special was that first spring training, that going down there, seeing all these girls, the, some of the best baseball, women baseball players at that time, getting a uniform, being a part of a team instead of a part of a, a boys pickup game. And, and my mom turning to me and saying, you can stay. Oh, <laughs> I think that, that did it for me. Uh, what a special moment, huh? Yes. Looking back at your life, sounds like you had a very successful career with Pacific Bell. But how much different would your life have been had you not had that moment and the chance to play baseball for three years? You know, I don't know. Um, maybe because if I didn't have that chance, I would have never known. I would have never known I missed, missed all of that. So it probably wouldn't have, I'd have just been a baseball fan and, and that's it. Did it change your life then? Uh, oh, I don't know whether the, you mean did the baseball change my life? Well, I'll, I'll say one thing for you. It gave me a lot of confidence that I never had. It gave me uh, 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 where, where I was more easy with people than, than I had been. Like I said, I was, I was backward shy. I, I never talked to anybody. I, I, the only one I talked to was the boys when we played. Throw it to me, throw it to me. 
but yeah, I think it helped me maybe that in that way. Uh, but other than that, I don't know. I, it impresses me, though, that for these last few years, you've been something of an ambassador, ambassador for the league and for this concept that maybe we can have a league of their own again. And and I'm I'm very passionate about that. I I want so much to have these girls have the same opportunities that we had to play baseball because I know in listening to them they don't want to be pushed into softball and that's what's happening after little league either they go to softball or they don't play and now with with this uh, baseball sprouting around the country we have over oh, thousands of girls playing baseball all over the country. And it, it was just proven here in Rockford this year where we had 280 girls come to play baseball. And you'd think that, you know, someone would see that and <laughs> realize, hey, this, this might be good. But like you say, someone's, somebody's thinking, well, maybe there'll have to be a lead, but who's going to come and see them? And you're probably right, Dan. We've got we've to press on. We've got to exploit this more. From what I understand, from what others have told me, you and Maybell, and I'm going to be interviewing Maybell Blair this afternoon. Right. You are like rock stars here, that wherever you go, you draw a crowd. Is that true? Uh, uh, well, Maybelle is the copy. <laughs> she, <laughs> you'll see when you get a hold of her. She's, uh, I'm just kind of there. Uh, I don't Ma think Maybelle, that's the case. Uh, she, uh, she excites them. <laughs> so, anyway. But yes, we do. The, the kids... Like I say, they come up to us and, and then, oh, I've seen the movie. I've seen the movie a hundred times. I know all the words. They sing the song to us. They give, they give us lines from the movie. Uh, one coach came up to me and she said, you know, she says, I play the movie before every game that we have. I said, what? She says, yeah, she says, it inspires the girls. Well... See, that's just what I mean. Yes, I, I'm, I'm surprised at what, what the movie has done for us. It, uh, it has just e exploded in our... Are you proud to be an ambassador for the game? Oh, I, I, I love it. I, I so enjoy sharing our stories with these kids and, and seeing how enthusiastic they are about this game, just like, just like we were. You know, for this, the love that these kids have for the game is the same love that we have had, had, have. <laughs> <laughs> and surely it's put you back on the road again, hasn't oh, it? Oh, we're back on the road again, yes. Okay. This has been a wonderful experience. I've loved this interview. I wonder if you have any final comments for us. Well, uh, I'd just like to... to encourage all young girls that if they want to play baseball, go for it. One of these days we're going to have that league of our own. What a great way to finish. Thank you very much, Shirley. Thank you, Mark. I hope everything was all right. I, I think this it's is more not, like outstanding. <laughs> this is not my best. Like I say, you, you'll get Maybell. You'll get an interview. Oh, no, this has been great. <laughs>